As Americans, we've been primed to believe that made in the USA is synonymous with ethically made. We think that sweatshops only exist in developing countries, but the truth is that sweatshops exist in the US as well. In this video, I want to talk about how this is even possible and what we can do to help. If you're new here, I'm Lily and I talk about sustainable fashion on this channel. I also have a blog about sustainability, running, and travel, and I hope you'll stick around if you're into those things too. First, let's define sweatshops. According to the US Department of Labor, a sweatshop is a factory that violates two or more labor laws. Sweatshops usually have the following characteristics. Unsafe working conditions, unfair pay, excessive working hours, child labor, and lack of worker benefits. We usually associate the word sweatshop with developing countries, which is definitely problematic that these people overseas are exploited and kept in this endless cycle of poverty, but that's a topic in itself. Sweatshops do exist elsewhere though, including in the US and Italy. In the US, there's a particularly high concentration of sweatshops in Los Angeles, California, which is home to 50,000 garment workers who are mainly women and immigrants. The Department of Labor found that 85% of these factories were in violation of the law. Garment workers are paid subminimum wage, overworked, and sometimes even abused. How is any of this even possible? Well, garment workers are often paid a piece rate instead of being paid hourly. Piece rate means that you get paid per item or per task. You might get 50 cents for a t-shirt or 5 cents for a zipper, for example. In theory, a piece rate system can lead to greater productivity and higher wages. In theory, companies that pay a piece rate also need to match minimum wage, but none of this is happening here. And so garment workers are being paid an average of $5.15 an hour when the California minimum wage is currently $12 and sometimes even higher in certain counties. The workers also regularly work 12 hours per day and 60 to 70 hours per week. Even worse, many of the workers can't advocate for themselves as they might not speak English. It's estimated that 50% of the garment workers are undocumented, so they might not have legal rights either. Remake of Sustainable Fashion Platform created a documentary called Made in America around this issue and interviewed a garment worker who told them this. The factory, they are paying me different price with the other workers because I, I cannot communication with the other workers. So the lady was cheating on me a long time. I feel sad and angry, but in the same time, I can do nothing. I don't have any power. It's clear that many garment workers are being exploited, but there's luckily current legislation that will hopefully improve their working conditions. The Garment Worker Protection Act was introduced in February 2020 by State Senator Maria Elena Durazzo. This bill would eliminate the piece rate system and also hold retailers accountable for garment worker wages. Currently, there's a loophole in California regulations as brands are considered retailers and not manufacturers, so they're not liable for the wages and benefits of garment workers. Brands like Forever 21 and Fashion Nova have purposely fabricated several layers of subcontracting to avoid liability. The Garment Worker Protection Act would close this loophole and make retailers responsible for the wages of all the workers in their supply chain. This bill is sponsored by the Garment Workers Center, a workers' rights organization campaigning to end sweatshops in Los Angeles. Garment workers themselves are also leading the movement to get this bill passed. There's been opposition to this bill by several business groups and law firms that represent brands like Forever 21, Fashion Nova, Alibaba, and LA Apparel. The California Chamber of Commerce even called the bill a job killer. They do raise an important concern, however. For the American garment industry to stay competitive with overseas markets, the cost of production, including wages, has to remain low. That's just the unfortunate reality. California garment workers face terrible conditions currently, but they may lose their jobs altogether if the piece rate system is eliminated. So doing nothing is bad, but passing the bill could also be bad. All of this just illustrates the need for an international trade agreement that protects workers' rights and prioritizes environmental causes. Other countries are able to offer such low-cost labor because they pay their workers poorly or not at all, prohibit unionizing, skimp out on factory safety, and don't adhere to any environmental standards. A trade agreement could at least level the playing field and prevent a shift of jobs overseas. Not every California-based company is opposed to the bill, though. Brands that already follow regulations and manufacture ethically want the bill to be passed because it could level the playing field for them. Again, the only reason fast fashion is so cheap is because workers are exploited. 
If they're no longer exploited, prices will have to rise and there will be less incentive to buy fast fashion. This could increase demand and opportunity for ethical fashion. Basically, the whole situation is very nuanced, but I think the Garment Worker Protection Act is a step in the right direction, as what's currently happening is illegal and people are suffering. We need to at least send the message that this is unacceptable. The bill unfortunately died in assembly in fall 2020, but the garment workers are pushing to have it reintroduced and passed this year. If you're living in the US, there's a petition that you can sign to show your support for the bill. I'll link it down below. Otherwise, we can also try to avoid these unethical brands and support better ones if that's within our means. Some of the top offenders of wage theft in LA are Fashion Nova, Forever 21, Windsor, Charlotte Russe, Harley Davidson, Urban Outfitters, and Lulu's. If you're looking for better brands made in the US, some are Groceries Apparel, Mia Coda, Harvest and Mill, and Mate the Label. These will be linked down below. Some of these are pretty pricey, so definitely don't feel bad if you can't afford that. It's more important to practice mindful consumption and only buy what you need, regardless of what brand that is. Thrifting is also a cheaper way to put money back into local communities, especially if you shop at local stores supporting good causes. I know this video was pretty gloomy, but I think it's important to talk about these issues so that we can push for change. Please sign that petition if you can and share this information with others. I also have a blog post version of this video and a shorter TikTok that I'll link below if those are easier to share. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.